Okay, hey, 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 Small Axe community. It is your boy, Nico here. Today, I'm hanging out with a good friend of mine who I haven't actually caught up with in a while. And we were supposed to do this podcast interview like two years ago. It didn't happen, but now I got him on. Lee Fjord, welcome, my friend. Uh, Nico, thanks. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of you know your effort towards this community. And I'm glad I was able to uh, get some time on your show. Thank you. Dude, you're the best, man. I remember when we first met, you know, we had stories about you living in Tampa or that Florida area. And then we had uh, uh, some conversations together and hosted some rooms on Clubhouse when that was a big thing. And now we're finally jamming on air, my man. I like it. I love it. You know, now that we're I'm back in person with everyone. So um, I'm 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 liking being out and about in person with everyone. I'm sad we can't see each other yet, but I'm hoping to see you at a you know, one of the events or something one of these days. Cool, man. We will make it happen. So let's tell people who is Lee Fjord. Can you catch people up and let people know who you are, what you're working on, and, and let's give them some background about you. Yeah. So I am based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I, I have had, I uh, started out in property management in 2012. Uh, so I learned from the bottom, uh, been in it since, you know, then. So a little over a decade now at this point. I built a property management group up to manage a couple hundred houses and then transitioned into commercial leasing and brokerage, uh, was a broker with Marcus and Millichap for a period of time, simultaneously was investing, uh, loved, fell in love with you know multifamily and providing housing to families. So uh, in 2017, bought a duplex that was a... Um, you know, a, a value add sight unseen duplex that needed a ton of work in a transitional neighborhood. And I did it all the wrong way, uh, as usually people do on their first one. <laughs> and then uh, since then, I realized the power of partnerships. Uh, eventually, I did. And I started partnering with some great folks and uh, now have a portfolio of 450 apartments here in the greater St. Louis MSA. Uh, have exited one uh, of them, not including it, it's not included in the numbers, but I bought it in 19 uh, for 1.3 and sold it in t- just uh, recently in 2022 for uh, 2.5. So we had a huge gain on that deal. And now uh, we're under contract to acquire a 138 unit apartment building in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I'm really excited about uh, expanding the Green Forest Capital brand and group and team outside of St. Louis. And now we look in uh, the Sun Belt, uh, as well as Kansas and Oklahoma. Dude, that is phenomenal stuff, man. Oh, my God. I don't even know where to start. But so you you got a lot going on. You're working on a lot, but you're going to be focusing on that greater. What is it? uh, Missouri area, did you say? Yep. That's where we are based out of is St. Louis. And that's where the bulk of uh, my portfolio is. Uh, but now I have stepped away from full-time broker and now I'm a essentially full-time investor, kind of swapped it being part-time investor, full-time broker to now uh, full-time investor, part-time broker. And that gives me the capability to get uh, go wider. And now we're making offers on and underwriting deals uh, in Missouri, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Arkansas, um, you know, all of the good areas. And and we, uh, we're really excited about what's to come in the marketplace in the future, in the next couple months. Wow, man. Okay. Uh, so yes, I'm excited too, but why are you excited about the next few months? I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for operators who run a good ship, uh, who are financeable, who don't need to use uh, bridge debt options, and honestly, that have, a, uh, that have strength in the marketplace. People that have their loans coming due in the next 18 months are going to have or planned for refinances uh, are going to struggle, you know, in the next 18 months. And, you know, we look at it as an opportunity. Interest rates are rising, you know, all the same things that everybody else is talking about out there. And, 
we're just strong operators and we know what we're looking for when we buy in good areas uh, and we place good, solid, long-term debt on our properties. And yeah, I think, I think there's going to be some turmoil for those who are, are, we're not prepared for 8% interest rates. Yeah, t- absolutely. I mean, it changes things. I mean, LTVs are way down and, and interest rates are way up. So it just makes, you know, things a lot less affordable. Um, very interesting, man. Okay. So where it, you just, you mentioned Arkansas, is that the latest acquisition? It is hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, cool. Love that market. It's got growing population. It's a tertiary market, uh, which we like, we like tertiary markets that are growing and, um, yeah, it's about 60,000 population. There's a national park there. Uh, world-class casino and racetrack uh, Oaklawn there, as well as a beautiful lake, Lake Hamilton, uh, which is just going to continue to draw people to the municipality and the community over in the future. Cool, man. And um, who are you working with on these projects or that project? Mm-hmm. So the, you know, I actually am partnering with the first partner that I ever had uh, on a decent sized property. His name's Garrett. Uh, he's based out of California. And uh, he and I teamed up after we sold that 38 unit um, again and decided to take down this one. I brought my team. He brought his. And um, we're really excited about that particular deal. Uh, And, you know, it's really great because he and I had one property together that was very successful. And then this kind of uh, rekindled the... the business, you know, uh, uh, nothing like a seven figure payday to bring two partners back together and make them all <laughs> happy, go lucky and everything. Then there ready to do, do more deals together. I'm in, man. I hear it. So, all right. And uh, what's like when you're working with partners, maybe you can give some tips of looking for good partners or good potential partners to the listeners out there. When I approach partnerships, I look at myself first and I try to find my weak places. Um, I know where I'm strong and I know where I'm weak. And I, uh, I you know, continue to focus on making sure that my strengths grow and then find partners that offset my weaknesses, uh, partners that have the ability to you know, go out and you know, asset manage deals properly as well as myself. And you know, partners that can have a pre-established network of um, investors to be able to raise capital from, and partners that have uh, the ability to sign on uh, re- large, you know, loans um, and bring all of the money to the table that's needed in order to, you know, put a deal under contract, go through the contract to close process, earnest money, you know, hard money or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just finding those weaknesses and fill in the gaps. Uh, cool. With people that are strong, yeah, I love it, man. And uh, you mentioned just some roles, some key roles on a on a GP team. Is there anyone that kind of resonates with you most? My primary role is as the um, like the deal finder uh, and asset manager. That's where I truly shine. I, as a recovering uh, broker. Uh, I am uh, ineptly able to make phone calls, create rapport, uh, build relationships with other brokers as well as owners, and know you know the ins and the outs of negotiating a purchase and the the ability to be able to bring two parties together and have both of them leave the table uh, happy isn't the easiest thing to do. But that's one of the places where I shine. Underwriting is, of course, part of that. Uh, but underwriting really isn't a role. Um, and then the other one is asset management. Uh, having been a property manager for quite some time, I learned the ability to, you know, look at look between the lines. You know, take the numbers and and uh, try to tweak them. If you can tweak certain numbers, just a couple percentage points. And execute that business plan properly. It can make huge differences in value. Um, you know, for example, utilities. If we can uh, reduce our utility expenses by, I don't know, uh, sixty thousand dollars a year, uh, and it's a six cap property theoretically, 
uh, that increases the value of the asset by a million dollars. And that does not cost anything to do. If you can literally just decrease utility expenses or whatever the expense is, um, you can drastically change the value of your asset. Love it, man. Great tips. Has it always been the case for you that you uh, leaned towards those roles or have you kind of like experimented with other roles and just really liked those two roles, the asset management and the acquisition? Oh, absolutely. Now I have a group of investors that I turn to who trust uh, in my team to be able to execute the business plan properly. And uh, we are able to, you know, not just run deals and find deals, but raise money. Um, you know, there's no limit to the amount of, you know, money that can be raised for deals because that just gives you the ability to do more deals. But uh, essentially what I'm getting at is we do that as well. And that's, that is the muscle that I am actively exercising heavily right now because it was, it was my weak spot and it's growing. I can feel that muscle growing and that ability for me to bring that to my team, uh, growing and building, uh, but it's still something that I'm working on. Cool. Lee, thank you for sharing. And, um, of your 400 plus units, are they all syndications or they mix of JVs? Mix. Yeah. Uh, there are, um, there's two JVs and two syndications, uh, and we do both B and C syndications based upon the property. Uh, you know, it's really just what works best for the business plan. Um, you know, I like I like doing 506 Bs because it gives me the ability to reach out to the people that I've already created relationships with and um, have conversations with them about opportunities that they might not, not normally know about. Um, you know, bring it to them and say, hey, we talked about this before. Would you be interested in investing passively in, you know, a multifamily real estate syndication? Uh, here's the information on it. Please attend the webinar, whatever. And the response has generally been very good. Um, I've had a lot of people um, trust in my team's ability to, um, you know, be a steward. That's kind of the way that I look at that. The syndications is I'm a steward of not only my money, because I invest in my own money into every single deal as well uh, as my investors, but it's a steward. I want to make sure that they receive the best potential financial return uh, possible while simultaneously making sure that the tenants have a wonderful place to live. Um, you know, that's kind of our motto is uh, clean, uh, good, clean, affordable, modern housing. And um, and providing investors with uh, above average market returns by investing in real estate without having to be a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is key, man. For you and I who are on this active side and you holding multiple jobs and finally kind of giving up the the broker position, you must have been, as I'm going through now, working at W2, an active uh, real estate investor, you must have experienced a lot of challenges. It it's not easy being on the active side. And a lot of times I say, I just kind of want to, you know, go, go to the LP side and be passive because things are a lot easier that way. LPs are, you know, it, that is my goal. Eventually, my goal eventually is to just be a limited partner. You, I mean, I don't approach uh, real estate syndication as a passive job. It's not, uh, you know, it's not passive cash flow. Now, do I get passive cash flow off of my invested money into my deal? Sure, uh, but the um, you know the true passive income comes from being an investor and trusting in the people to uh, manage your you know your asset because you're buying a part of an asset uh, properly and know how to execute the business plan properly. Um, trust them to do it. And I, I work that job every day, seven days a week. And, um, and I, I would, I love when my, you know, when I talk to investors who are uh, selling small multifamilies because they're exhausted, like, oh, I thought this was going to be easy. I thought I would just like, you know, manage the manager and I would just collect rent payments every month and they would just flow freely into my, into my bank account every month. <laughs> 
Um, that's not really how it works. Uh, it does work that way when you're a limited partner because you've had the ability to, or you've chosen to entrust someone else to execute the business plan for you. Who knows what they're doing has been there, done that and made mistakes and, and know how to avoid them. Um, but I love, you know, working with investors that are going from like single family houses and small multis and deciding to, um, you know, participate passively. Uh, that and real estate agents that don't invest or don't have the time to invest in real estate. I love working with them uh, to allow them to invest in real estate without having to be a landlord because who's got time on a Saturday night to go over to the property and fix the dishwasher. I know, Mm -hmm. I know, you you know, some people enjoy that kind of stuff, but (laughs) um, most of us don't. And I know um, I've been doing it for a long time. I did it that way for a little while and, and uh, I don't recommend it. And I, I love, and that's why a lot of people don't want to be, want to invest in real estate is they think, well, what happens when the tenant calls me or the manager calls me and says that the dishwasher overflowed and now all of the flooring in your house is destroyed. And by the way, we're going to have to rip out all the carpet and put, you know, and do this, that, or the other thing, you know, like bring in a remediation company because there was a flood or a fire or whatever. Um, it's just, you know, your time is the one thing you can't ever get back. And the best Mm -hmm. thing to be is an LP, like limited partners have it the best. (laughs) I agree. And the returns are as good or better because we're participating as GPs as LPs as well. Right. So, I mean, and, and as an LP, you can also diversify into a bunch of other different properties, but you, you kind of nailed it with, uh, I feel that you nailed it with stating, you know, that. You're, you're, you're kind of investing somebody, you do all the vetting up front, you know the person, you invest with them and you invest with that person because you trust them to manage your money well, right? And let's say those things happen, you know, there are floods, there are, you know, dishwashers that break. You know that the operator that you chose to work with is going to handle it to the best of the of their ability that will benefit the limited partners in the end. So very important. I like that. 100%, you know. And the only way to do it well is lar- the larger the property, the better, because then you can hire quality third-party property manager uh, management companies, afford to pay them. Uh, they can then afford to uh, hire the best in class management staff and maintenance staff. And you can afford to do things like, like we provide a, um, uh, a uniform for our maintenance staff to wear on site. And we pay for those uniforms to get professionally laundered. Mm. Uh, So, you know, when our maintenance man shows up to work and puts on his uniform, he's going to look great. He's going to have, you know, the company logo on and he's going to go into the tenant's apartment, you know, looking good, clean, smelling good. And, um, you know, and that's not his responsibility. It's our, you know, our responsibility to train the employees and provide them with the, you know, the tools and I see so many mom and pops that are running, you know, properties and their maintenance guy is driving around in a rusty pickup truck wearing, you know, um, overalls and, and, you know, and they got paint all over them and they're, you know, it's just the only way to do it properly. In my personal opinion is to be able to go larger and you only go larger as a team. And yep. what's the best place to be on the team to be a limited partner. Cause then you don't even have to, you know, know what the maintenance guy's uniform looks like, but yeah, I, totally. I know what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Thank you, Lee. Um, so for, let's talk a little bit about your experience as a broker in the sense that you mentioned earlier that you have to do a lot of phone calls or you do a lot of phone calls and you make, you build rapport with people for, I know a lot of people that are going direct to seller, right? And maybe they're not having that much success. Uh, maybe you can kind of share a little bit of tips from the broker perspective of how to reach out and how to get contacts and leads and how to foster those leads. It's instilling into the owner, your strength and capability to close that and, and addressing that right out the gate um, and telling the truth about it uh, and then deciding which you know, what you're able to go after. So like for my group, uh, we have the capability to buy a deal between five and $25 million tomorrow. So if I were to pick up the phone and call an owner that owns a property that's worth $50 million, 
I would be misrepresenting myself and calling them saying, Hey, would you be interested in selling me your property? Um, you know, just isn't, it's not genuine, you know, but when I call an owner who owns a $8 million property, I go, hi, my name's Lee. Uh, I just bought a property down the street. I always make it a point to reach out to all the neighbors, introduce myself, get to know you. You know, I understand you own, you know, uh, park place apartments, whatever. Um, uh, let's get to know each other, you know, and the first, the first call is never, oh my gosh, you caught me at the right time. I just happened to think about selling my property. I'm ready to sell today. My loan is coming due in, in 90 days. Please solve my problem for me. It's never that. It's just a, hey, I, let's get to know each other. Um, and then, you know, the conversation usually ends with, it starts with, hey, let's get to know each other. Uh, and then can I follow up with you or reach out to you every once in a while? And then, hey, before I let you go, you know, we're we're in acquisition mode right now. Uh, would you be, you know, interested in potentially or thinking about selling any of your properties anytime soon? No. Okay, sounds good. I'll talk to you later. And then it's just the money's in the follow up, maintaining the relationship, um, and just knowing, you know, hitting them with a text message or a phone call every once in a while. Whenever I travel to town where I or a, a part of town or to a town where we own a property, I make it a point to try and reach out to several owners that I've already had good conversations with. Maybe we've talked about like getting a cup of coffee or whatever. And then I'll say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be in town. I'd love to have you over to my property and show you, you know, what we're doing over there. Would that work for you? And get, you know, we can get a cup of coffee or whatever. Um, and the answer usually is yes. But for those who don't already own something, which I used to be that person, it's being able to convey this the solid, clear message of I, um, you know, I have the capability to close. We are able to buy something uh, because of X. You know, mm -hmm. my team. You know, because it's a team. It, it's not just me. Um, my team overall has you know combined net worth of sixty five million dollars, and uh, we control fourteen hundred doors in five states. Now I'm only a part of that team, 450 doors, whatever, but having that message um, and direct to seller is hard. If you don't catch a seller when they're already ready to sell, it's you're unpacking a lot of issues there. Um, brokers are the easiest, you know, the best route, but the problem is then you're dealing with competition. So, mm -hmm. so it's a give and a take. I so. agree. I agree. Love it. Thank you, Lee. And, um, just to stick with this topic for another minute, um, is there like a price you have in mind? I guess you know the areas, you know the neighborhoods, you kind of have a general price per door. Obviously, you're not going to have access to financials on the spot necessarily. Uh, so do you kind of have like a price per month in, in your mind? And do they have, uh, do they ever ask you, what would you give me? And how do you approach that? I generally approach it. And so when a seller says, what would you give me? Um, my answer is usually, um, you know, I try to respond with a question. Look, I will give you full market value for your property. You know, I will give you full market value for your property. I am not a bottom feeder. I'm not looking to take advantage of anyone in any situation. If you actually are honestly considering selling your property, uh, the best I can say is that you'll save, you know, a decent amount on hiring you know, a, uh, a broker and deal with a whole bunch of rigmarole, which I used to be one. Uh, and if that's something you're seriously interested in doing, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation, review, you know, a couple things, the normal stuff, you know, the, your T12 and your rent roll. And I can probably get you a range very close. If it works for you, if the number works for you, that works for you. If it doesn't, then no big deal. Yeah. I, you know, like, Let's be friends at the end of the day. Um, I try not to approach it as aggressively as, you know, you can. Some people are like, you know, very aggressive in their cold calling or their owner or their relationships. And it's just like, well, he's, they're not really a seller because they didn't want to send me their numbers. It's like, well, they kind of want to know whether or not you're a real buyer too. And mm -hmm. Unless you can convey like, hey, I'm, you know, actively, um, If you're actively, you know, having those conversations all day, then you can, um, you know, you can do that. You can convey strength pretty easily. Yeah. Awesome. 
Lee, you're the man. Let's um let's transition to our final question. It's a doozy, man. And I and this is for the audience. I didn't give him any fair warning of this question. So <laughs> let's give it a shot and see where we land. So let's imagine, Lee, it was 100 years from now. You have great, great grandchildren. They are super happy and they want to write a book about you. So what would you want them to title this book? Title a book. I you know, I would say that I would ask my grandchildren to title a book about me. Wow, that's hard. Um, <laughs> um, you know, he who cared, you know, I want to be somebody who cares and not just cares about my own family, but cares about others as well. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Yeah. That perfect. Look, on the spot, nailed it. I like it. <laughs> All right, Lee, let's get some people, uh, the, some form of contacting you. Thanks. Uh, so they can find, I mean, literally find me on Facebook. There aren't very many Lee Fjords. It's F-J-O-R-D, uh, Facebook or greenforestcapital.com. Uh, or shoot me an email, lee at greenforestcapital.com. I, you know, there's a place on the website to be able to book a call with me. If anybody's interested in, um, you know, learning about the, the team, learning about what we do, uh, find out about, you know, potential future opportunities, please reach out now because we do a lot of deals where we aren't able or allowed to market or advertise them. 506Bs cannot be marketed. Um, and I would love to be able to create a relationship early on. Uh, versus after the, you know, the property is already under contract because by then it's too late. So reach out. Uh, let's get to know each other. I'm here to add value and help in any way that I can uh, all day long. So yeah, greenforestcapital.com. Awesome, Lee. Thank you. You're the man. It's been a, a pleasure and an honor catching up with you. We need to do this more often. And uh, why don't we just make it like a habit every few months, just catch, check in and, and do another recording. Heck yeah, I would love that. Let's do it. Thanks, man. Thanks.